while it's not official, tell a friend to tell a friend that Lindy Ruff is going to be back behind the bench for the New Jersey Devils to lead them once again. Is that the right move by Tom Fitzgerald? And what are my expectations moving forward? And also, let's hear some sound bites from his players in regard to their thoughts of Lindy Ruff. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play play announcer, Devils Ride for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. As I previously stated in the latest episode, I mentioned that I was going to be in attendance for Tom Fitzgerald's exit interview. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to ask him a question. However, uh, some of my associates were able to Asked some of the concerns that I had for the Devils going into the offseason. Tom Fitzgerald was able to touch on a lot of subjects that we can discuss during the course of the, of the offseason. He mentioned the fact that the New Jersey Devils could trade for a first-round draft pick. He talked about his expectations last year and going into this year. He talked about free agency because someone mentioned that maybe the New Jersey Devils should try to aim for a sandpaper type of player, considering the fact that the Devils sometimes got – out muscled in terms of physicality against the Carolina Hurricanes. Also, the elephant in the room, what's the contract situation like with Timo Meyer and Jesper Bratt, who are both set to become restricted free agents. And Tom Fitzgerald mentioned that he doesn't anticipate too much issues. So I think we can expect for Bratt and Meyer to both be on the roster come next year. But we'll talk about that in a future episode because that's definitely going to be the talk of the town during the course of the summer. And I don't anticipate for Meyer or Brad to sign on the dotted line come tomorrow. So I think the biggest storyline at the conclusion of the exit interview was that Tom Fitzgerald revealed that Lindy Ruff is going to return as head coach for the New Jersey Devils. So Ruff is going to be back behind the bench leading the young guys and also some of the veteran pieces to possibly go a little bit further in the Stanley Cup playoffs come next season. Here's what Tom Fitzgerald said during his exit interview to confirm the news that Lindy Ruff is slated to be back behind the bench for the Devils. Check it out. As we went along here, I always said Lindy Ruff was the right coach for this group. So here we are today. Um, he's still the right coach for this group. He's earned that right. Um, he deserves that. We deserve him, to be quite honest. And uh, I, I just, he's a great partner for me. And those kids love him. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect coach, uh, but he's got the utmost respect from our players and from us and from ownership. Um, it's just, uh, he's, he's still the right guy for this job. So just to confirm then he will be, he'll be, he will be, um, uh, coach. He'll be back behind the bench. <laughs> he, he will be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, some people might have mixed emotions about Lindy Ruff because obviously at the beginning of the year, we heard the fire Lindy chance. Then a few weeks later when the Devils were in the midst of their 13-game win streak, we heard, sorry, Lindy, Devils struggled in late December, early January. People were saying, like, maybe Lindy Ruff should be fired and uh, once again. And then come the playoffs, uh, people were like, sorry, Lindy, once again. Then the Devils were struggling initially against the Rangers. People were just like, if the Devils get swept, Lindy Ruff needs to get fired. And then Devils beat the Rangers. People forgive Lindy. So basically, it's like an on-again, off-again, on-again, off-again relationship with some of these fans in regards to Lindy Ruff. As some of you already know, I am actually a big fan of Lindy Ruff. I think he has done a phenomenal job of leading this uh, Devils team to success, and he was given a better chance this year. So in today's episode, I'm going to give you guys my overall thoughts on Lindy Ruff, how the season went on his end. Do I agree with uh, Tom Fitzgerald bringing him back or planning to bring him back? Because right now, nothing has been set in stone. Then in segment two, I'll talk about is Lindy Ruff the long-term solution? Because I think that might be some of the concerns regarding some of the Devils fans because they know that Lindy Ruff is getting up there in age and it's just like how much further can he go? 
And then in the third and final segment, I will uh, share some sound bites I was able to pick up from exit interviews once again that feature Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, Nico Heischer, basically saying nothing but good things about their head coach. Now, let's recap Lindy Ruff's season. Now, before we could talk about this season, we need to go back to the beginning. So Lindy Ruff was hired in July 2020. A lot of people were, uh, how would I say, questioning the hiring by Tom Fitzgerald, including me at the time, because people were like, Lindy Ruff's style is old school. It's not going to translate well. And that's a fair point to make because Lindy Ruff saw more success during his early coaching tenure compared to now. And obviously there were a, a few other uh, options on the table. So La Violette was definitely an option to take the reins of head coach for the Devils. Gallant was also on the table for the Devils as well. And then they just decided to settle with Lindy Ruff. My initial thoughts for the first two years of Lindy Ruff's coaching tenure with the Devils, yeah, it was a bit disappointing. And I get why people wanted to see Lindy Ruff go. But my thought process was simply this. These young guys need a consistent voice because the Devils were seeing some front office changes and I didn't think another voice behind the bench was going to do them any uh, any good. So I was like, look, we need to give Lindy Ruff a fair chance because his first year as head coach for the Devils took place during the 2021 COVID shortened year that consisted of 56 games. I didn't think that was a fair sample size to uh, assess Lindy Ruff. And then come next year, Yes, you can make the argument saying the Devils were able to have somewhat of a successful offseason because they were able to get Dougie Hamilton. They got Tomas Tatar. They also had Jonathan Bernier. So you got your uh, veteran goalie. You got your possible top six performer in Tomas Tatar. And then you get your big name free agent in Dougie Hamilton. But here's the problem. COVID restrictions were still uh, heavily enforced during the first half of the year. And not only that, the Devils were dealing with a lot of injuries particularly with Jack Hughes. So Jack Hughes went down second game of the year. He wasn't seen again until like somewhere in November. And then later on in the year, Jack Hughes got hurt once again. So he wasn't able to finish off the season. And basically the Devils went on like what, a six game losing streak to close out the year. And basically people were saying like, Lindy Ruff needs to be fired. And I was like, hang on a second, because it's not only just Jack Hughes. I, I can list a lot of other players that the Devils were missing at around that time. I think Jesper Bratt was dealing with something. P.K. Subban was dealing with something. Uh, Dougie Hamilton was obviously out with that facial fracture. Uh, Mackenzie Blackwood, I mentioned it in the previous episode, he was dealing with something at around the time. And I know that there's a lot of other players, but basically I was saying, saying that I don't think it's fair to judge Lindy Ruff in that sort of aspect because, once again, he was plagued by a COVID-riddled year that saw a lot of COVID restrictions. He was dealing with a lot of injuries to his personnel so when the devils are rolling with basically the utica comments out there i'm just like what else do you expect yes they are going to get their asses kicked just because they don't have their star players out there they don't have a fighting chance i don't know what you were expecting but i certainly wasn't expecting all that much so that was where i stood with lindy ruff i was like look if you want to fire some of his staff that's fair because the goaltending situation was atrocious special teams was atrocious so what did they do? They fired Mark Recchi, who was in charge of special teams, and they decided not to renew Alon Nazardine's contract. And I said, this is sort of going to be a tryout year for Lindy Ruff because it's most likely going to be the final year of his deal, and he's going to be held to a shorter lease. So basically, the excuses are close to zero because now you're going to get a fully healthy Devils team. You changed your staff, and uh, the COVID restrictions have lightened up. So I was like, this is going to be make or break for Lindy Ruff. Devils did get off to a slow start. They started the year 0-2. They lost back-to-back -back games 5-2. And I was just like, okay, uh, I would give Lindy Ruff around 10 to 15 games. And if the Devils are struggling mightily, then maybe you have to consider firing him. But I just don't think you can fire him after two games. I don't think that was going to help the Devils in any which sort of way. And obviously you got... Andrew Burnett in the pipeline who could take over as head coach. And we know that Andrew Burnett can take over in the midst of controversy, similar to what he did with the Florida Panthers not too long ago. But then the Devils go on that 13 game win streak. And uh, I know the Devils uh, kind of struggled in late December and in early January, but I want to give Lindy Ruff a lot of credit because during that, uh, that month of struggling or so, what were the Devils able to do? They were able to keep themselves 
afloat. And another thing that you guys need to factor in about Lindy Ruff is that he was able to get the most out of a lot of players. So look who had career years. Jack Hughes had a career year. He had 99 points, and he broke the franchise record for most points in a single season. Nico Heischer was able to have a career year. And remember, most people were writing Nico Heischer off as, a, as not being a superstar, and now he's a finalist for the Selkie Award. I think Nico Heischer still has a lot of untapped potential, and I think you got to credit a lot of that to Lindy Ruff. Dougie Hamilton, he was able to break Scott Stevens' single-season record for most goals by a defenseman, and he also tied Barry Beck's franchise record for most goals in a single season by a defenseman. Jesper Bratt, he was able to match his season high from last year. Dawson Mercer, once he was given a bigger opportunity, he was able to uh, be a good spark plug for the Devils. Thomas Shatar, he surprised a lot of people. Eric Holla was a good glue piece. Damon Severson took a back seat. And yet he was still able to be effective out there. Yes, he was a bonehead at times, but still Damon Severson played great minutes. And then Ryan Graves, his plus minus was phenomenal. Michael McLeod and Nathan Bastian were consistently able to be a spark for the Devils on the bomb six. That BMW line, and even though Miles Wood did struggle in round one of the playoff series against the Rangers, he was able to redeem himself. And I got to give credit where credit is due. Miles Wood did play a vital part in the Devils' overall success in the first half of the year. Now, I can go on and on and on about players who were able to have a great impact this season for the Devils, but you got to give more credit to Lindy Ruff because it's one of the things that kind of irks me about coaches is that usually they're the first ones to be blamed if something goes wrong, but they're the last people you give credit to when things go right. So here's the thing. The Devils were able to have a historic season. They put up 52 wins. They had the biggest single season points turnaround in NHL history with plus 49. And like I said, a lot of players were able to break personal records, team records, NHL records. And I think you got to give a lot of credit to Lindy Ruff because he's putting the lineup out there. He sees what works. He sees what doesn't work. A lot of people were wondering why was Eric Kala still remaining on the ice And Lindy Ruff was like, he's doing the little things to help Jack Hughes succeed. So that's my overall thing about Lindy Ruff, which was his first two years, I don't think it was fair on his end because he had to deal with COVID, he had to deal with injuries, and it it just wasn't a fair sample size to judge him as a coach. And a lot of people were saying he was done. I was like, give him one more chance and give him a sizable chance. Don't fire him after two or three games. That doesn't make sense. That's just silly. Give them some time, and the Devils were able to redeem themselves. So has it been perfect? No, but what situation is? And I got to ask this for Devils fans. Like, where do you stand with Lindy Ruff? Because I was hearing a lot of people saying, fire Lindy if the Devils were going to get swept by the Rangers when they went down 0-2. And and my thing was like, I don't care if the Devils get swept in the first round. They exceeded expectations. What were your expectations going into the year? My expectations were they probably will miss the playoffs, but they're going to be right there for a wild card position. Lindy Ruff took that team to uh, finish second in the Metropolitan Division, and they were just one game away from surpassing the Hurricanes for the first position in the Metro. That's where I stand with Lindy Ruff, which is he was able to exceed expectations in more ways than one. 13-game win streaks don't just happen, guys, and franchise records like that don't happen. And the fact that the Devils were able to do this at this day and age, because they're such a young team still, and they're, and they're trying to get to Stanley cup contention. I think that says a lot about the leadership. It says a lot about the players. It says a lot about the front office. So Lindy Ruff for right now is the right man for the job. And I know you got Andrew Burnett in the pipeline. And I think Andrew Burnett is also talking to other coaches, but just to be fair to Lindy Ruff, he has done a phenomenal job with this team and Devils fans, I, I sometimes I just get a little confused when you say fire Lindy or don't re-sign him, whatever the case might be. What, what more did you want from the Devils organization? Because quite honestly, could have they won the Stanley Cup? I don't know, but I don't think they were personally ready on my end. I was like, if they get out the first round, I'm satisfied. Even if they miss the playoffs by a game or two, they, they are still uh, in a better position than I'm sure you anticipated going into the year. So I don't really understand why you don't want Lindy Ruff back as your head coach, especially since he's a Jack Adams finalist. What more do you want from Lindy Ruff? Like what what more could he have done this year in your opinion? Is he a long-term solution? I'll talk about that momentarily. But before we do, uh, I was able to get a soundbite from Lindy Ruff 
and asked him about how did the season go from his perspective, and here's what he told me. From sorry, Lindy, to fire Lindy, we've heard the storylines, and uh, obviously this team has seen a lot of success, and you're a finalist for the Jack Adams uh, trophy. What, now that you've had the time to like sit back and reflect, how has this season gone uh, from your perspective? Well, you know, I, I couldn't have painted uh, you know, really a better picture from you know, day one to, to where camp ended. Uh, the program we went through uh, uh, before camp, through, ca through training camp, uh, some of the goals we set through the regular season, uh, uh, the players put the work in. Uh, we got the results we needed. We were, uh, we were an exciting team. We were a fast team. We were a team that uh, improved in a lot of areas. So, uh, you know, as a coaching staff, uh, we're proud and we're excited about where we got the team to. Okay, so the big question that I'm sure a lot of people have is that, is Lindy Ruff a long-term solution? Like I said in segment one, Tom Fitzgerald confirmed that Lindy Ruff is going to be back behind the bench. However, he has revealed that uh, contract length has not been uh, announced quite yet. He and Lindy are still trying to work it out. And here's what Lindy Ruff said during his exit meeting from a few days ago in regards to... Uh, how the negotiation process is going between him and Fitzgerald. Lindy, have, you, have you and Tom had a conversation? No, about? Tom and I, we're, we're still in the process of breaking down uh, the meetings with players, and uh, uh, Tom and I will sit down at some point. I also want to add one thing. Since this was Lindy Ruff's final year on his contract, theoretically, he wasn't going to be fired either way. The Devils just wouldn't have extended his deal. It's the same situation with Alon Nazardine. The Devils didn't fire Nazardine. They just didn't extend his contract. They fired Mark Recchi because he still had some time remaining on his contract. Now, that's the, so my thing with Lindy Ruff is simply this. Yes, he's getting up there in age, and I guess you can make the argument saying that the Devils are a young team and they're trying to get over that hump so that way they can uh, become legitimate Stanley Cup contenders and go a little bit further in the playoffs. And I'm sure some of you are concerned, is Lindy Ruff the, the long-term solution? I'm going to say no. He's not the long-term solution. However, I still think he is good for anywhere from two to three years. I think Lindy Ruff still has it in him, and I'm sure he was going to use this season to gauge how far this team could potentially go. But since this team is now ahead of their overall process, I think Lindy Ruff wants to be a part of it. So I, I just want to tell you guys this. Lindy Ruff will leave the Devils organization when Lindy Ruff wants to leave the Devils organization because – during his exit interview, Tom Fitzgerald said that he and Lindy Ruff are good friends. And Tom Fitzgerald even said a couple of years ago that even if Lindy Ruff is not the head coach, a position is still opened up to him if he decides to step away from behind the bench. So either way, Lindy Ruff is going to have some sort of leadership position with the Devils organization. So either way, guys, even if he's not behind the bench, Lindy Ruff is still going to share his opinions as to what direction the team needs to go in. So Lindy Ruff is going to be a part of the Devils organization for a good while, whether you like it or not. But in terms of him being a head coach, I see two to three years. And once again, just to instill it inside your head, I don't know what your expectations are for Lindy Ruff, but I think he has gone above and beyond the call of duty for the Devils organization. Now, before we continue, I want to tell you guys about eBay Motors because I'm a car guy, and I like to tinker with my cars a little bit, especially since I like NASCAR. So for a championship team, it's all about making sure play, the player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs a fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that your part fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Similar to sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors, and with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And now, let me tell you about a new sponsor, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, 
and that is bird dog let me tell you about bird dogs i look better and feel great while wearing bird dogs their stretchy fabric makes my legs look great and they're comfier than my other shorts or pants they give me the freedom to wear one pair of shorts and pants on the golf course to a meeting a date or hang out with friends and as you guys know i live in arizona at times so the weather gets really hot out there and bird dog shorts are the perfect uh, attire that I could wear where I look stylish, I look good, but at the same time, I can breathe a little more comfortably. So uh, go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL. And when you enter promo code locked on NHL, they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs, Yeti style tumbler with every order. So once again, go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL. And trust me, you will not regret it. Okay, so I'm sure you don't want to just hear my opinions on Lindy Ruff and what he has done for the organization and what he has done for this team. Uh, once again, during the course of exit interviews, the players were asked, like, what did they think of Lindy Ruff and his overall coaching style? So I'm going to play you some of those sound bites. So enjoy some of these sound bites from Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, Nico Keisher, and others in regard to head coach Lindy Ruff. How has Lindy uh, helped this team? Uh, because obviously, uh, going into the year, a lot of people were uh, writing you guys off, and obviously you guys were able to finish second in the Metropolitan Division and reach the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on uh, Lindy Ruff's uh, leadership. Um, great. I mean, what he's done for us, it's been uh, he's been really patient with us. Uh, he obviously knows, like, he's so much experience. He knows uh, a lot of things we don't do, so uh, he definitely could all help us out in in, in uh, certain areas on the ice but also like as a person because uh, I mean he's been through so much especially even in this sport and uh, just the knowledge he has uh, it's it's something that we we can really take from him yeah I've always uh, backed Lindy and you know he did a great job getting us um, to this point you know we like I said we had a tremendous year and you know Lindy did a great a great job with us so um, I think everyone should be proud of what we did this year. Yeah, I think I think you did a great job. I think all the coaches together and as an organization, we did a great job. I mean, uh, we all battled, battled down and really focused on the system, how we needed to play, and we, we believed in it. And um, obviously the coaches are a part of that too, um, to help us believe in it and understanding that um, the system works when we when we all dial it in. So i um, got to give all credit to them. They, they do a hell of a job. Um, doing all the, the pre-scouts and make us ready to, to play games and um, we, we became successful as a team. Yeah, I think Lindy's great obviously, uh, you know, I've had him two years now and, um, you know, give me that opportunity as a young guy to, you know, prove myself and um, I, I just, you know, I really take those advice from him and listen and I pay attention and I think just with the group we had and um, how they did uh, use the old guys with the younger ones and uh, just really jealous together, uh, you know, I think it's a big learning experience for us and um, I think, you know, obviously everyone in this room and that in that uh, staff room also and upstairs, I think it's a big part of it and, uh, you know, everyone contributes. Yeah, I think, you know, the coaches were awesome. Lindy was great. Gilly was great. Um, you know, just working with me after practice and, you know, working on little things, saucing skills. Um, and then, you know, Gilly just telling me little pointers um, and really just coaching me up. So, you know, they're both great and, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing that. Lindy uh, obviously has a, a ton of experience, and I think, um, you know, being uh, maybe a little more old school, I think uh, me and him get along pretty well, and um, Lindy's done so much for so many guys in, in different ways. If you look, um, you know, how much he's done for a guy like me and, and somebody who's a completely different player, but even Jack, like the way Jack's game has grown in the last couple of years, I think um, he got out uh, about as much as you could have gotten out of the group in, in this year. He's been awesome with us. I think, you know, he's been been a league for a while and he's you know he's been he's been great and he's I, I appreciate how you know he kind of helped my career too and a lot and I got uh, yeah I'm just grateful to know how much coach is there any specific thing that he, he helped you with I think it's just continuing to you know turn everyone into a pro and you know, he's obviously been coaching for a while and you know stuff like that it's, he's just been he's just been really good Growing, growing everyone's game. I think he's been good with the young guys coming in, and you know, skilled guys like like Jack, and he's helped him, helped him a lot. And uh, yeah, um, 
I, th I thought he was a great coach this year. You know, he let you go out there and play your game. He gave you the freedom to um, make plays too, and you know, not be um, too tied down or you know, try to you know, you don't want to grip your stick too tight out there. But um, yeah, I'd say that was the best thing. And then you know, he was really good at reading the room too. It's going to be hard, you know, dealing with this many young guys on a team, and um, you know, with their confidence and everything, and picking spots when the yellow guys when not to. But I thought. He, I think he handled it really well. Everyone talks about like his old school demeanor as well. Did you see that in him? Yeah, he's got a lot of old school in him for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so the finalists for the Jack Adams Award are Dave Haxel of the Seattle Kraken, Jim Montgomery of the Boston Bruins, and obviously Lindy Ruff of the New Jersey Devils. Now, I'm going to make a case for Lindy Ruff. Now, I know Montgomery was able to lead the Boston Bruins to the uh, all-time best record in NHL history and also surpass uh, the, the all-time record in points. And I know Dave Haxtell was able to lead the Seattle Kraken in their second year as a franchise to the playoffs, and they made a legitimate playoff run. Unfortunately, they lost to the Dallas Stars in seven. But I think Lindy Ruff, just given what was going against him, I think he definitely deserves to uh, win the Jack Adams Award. And here's why. Because Lindy Ruff, going into the season, his job was on the line. I, I, I said it early on in the episode. I didn't want Lindy Ruff fired. But if you wanted to hold him to a shorter leash, that's perfectly justifiable. So there's no excuse. His staff, Some of his staff members were fired, including Mark Recchi and Alon Nazardine. His contract was not renewed. And the Devils were fully healthy going into the new year. Obviously, Nico Kiescher, he missed the first game of the year, but it was nothing major. And the Devils got off to a slow start, and a lot of people were pushing for Lindy Ruff to be fired. But did anyone expect for this Devils team to break some of their franchise records, including getting 52 wins, getting 100-plus points, finish, finishing second in the Metropolitan Division? They were just one game away from getting that first position, and they went on a 13-game win streak. 13-game win streaks don't just happen – and had that Toronto Maple Leafs game gone different, I think the Devils could have tied the Pittsburgh Penguins' all-time record for most consecutive wins. I, I, because remember, the Devils won their uh, three games after that infamous Toronto Maple Leafs game that snapped their 13-game win streak. I think Lindy Ruff deserves a lot of credit because he was able to get the most out of his big-name stars, including Jack Hughes, uh, Nico Heischer, and Jesper Bratt. And Timo Meyer was added to the mix. So that's another player that you got to incorporate in order to find success. And they were able to do so. Even though the scoring numbers went down for Timo Meyer, he was still, still able to have a big role on the team in terms of physicality. And he sort of changed the dynamic for the Devils roster. And it doesn't happen without the genius behind the bench in Lindy Ruff and I know a lot of people's concerns about Lindy Ruff was that early on in his coaching tenure he saw more success compared to now because a lot of people were saying he hasn't adapted to the new NHL but I think he shattered the rumors and he was like look I'm able to do a lot of great things with this Devils team so no disrespect to Haxel or Montgomery but I think Ruff definitely deserves it just because what was going against him what he had to work with because the Devils were projected to be a lottery team and yet they were able to make it to the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So Lindy Ruff deserves his extension. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. And for anyone who says that Lindy Ruff deserves to be fired, I, don't, I really don't know what else to tell you. All I can say is that I think you're just getting a little spoiled about the success of the New Jersey Devils. And I mean that respectfully because Lindy Ruff has done everything and more that I'm sure Devils fans wanted during the course of the year because people were like, this Devils team needs to get back to the playoffs. They need to get back to relevancy. They've been in a lengthy rebuild. And the last time that they had a legitimate playoff run was back in 2012 when they went to the Stanley Cup final. They went to the playoffs in 2018, but they were handled in five games by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Lindy Ruff is the guy moving forward for the Devils. Is he a long-term solution? Do I see him here in five to 10 years? Probably not. But at the same time, the Devils can rely on him to use him as a stepping stone to get to that next level, similar to what they've done this year. Lindy Ruff, in my eyes, is the right guy to lead this Devils organization. And it, if you don't believe my word for it, just once again, replay some of those sound bites I was able to provide you guys. So let me know what you guys think. What do you think of Lindy Ruff 
What do you think of his relationship with Tom Fitzgerald? And do you think that Lindy Ruff is the right man for the job to lead the Devils organization to even greater success? Curious to your guys' thoughts. So leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on a podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal Twitter page at TreyMatt4 or the show's Twitter page at Locked On Devils. As for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. A lot of more sound bites to break down. So buckle up for these next few weeks 